Welcome to Heart Speak Podcast, episode 33, The Magic and the Myths of the Chakras. Recently, I was listening to some very eminent speakers in our field of spirituality talk about different aspects of what it is to be a spiritual being living a human existence. And they mentioned certain factors that I felt were myths that had been carried on for many years about this matter of being a spiritual human being. And they related very much to the chakras and made me feel that it was important to perhaps share some of my ideas over 35 years of researching, exploring, working with the chakras in my practice, in my own life. And I hope that you'll enjoy this little exploration. Towards the end of this podcast, I'm going to offer a meditation so you can explore your own chakras if you're interested. So do stay listening. My first love affair with the chakras occurred when I was reading a book, first published in 1975 by a radionics teacher, master radionics teacher, David Tansley. And he was talking about the subtle bodies and the chakras. And I can still see myself sitting on the grass of the South Downs in Britain reading this book. And it was almost as if I came alive at that time. It was as if I was reading something I knew so well. Do you have those memories? Do you have those moments where you think, oh my God, I've come home. This is, this is it. I hope sometimes maybe when I'm talking to you, those moments of, yes, this is right. This is me. She's talking to me. <laughs> and these memories that you might have. David Tansley was re referencing quite often the work of Alice Bailey. Some of you may have read Alice Bailey's books. I will say you don't quite read Alice Bailey. You delve in and out of the books because they're very dense and uh, full of facts. And Alice Bailey channeled the Tibetan master called DK. And much of what you read, especially when I was reading Esoteric Healing, is couched in subtleness, in uh, maybe sometimes you think, why is it more, not more clear? And he very much says, maybe you are not quite ready to hear the truth. And, and that could certainly be the reason. But I did read Esoteric Healing, that book, and, and several of her other books, or his other books. <clears throat> and I realized that this was something I knew. I think that's the importance, whether it's my podcasts, whether it's my books, and I write a lot about the chakras in my book, Frontiers of Health, and the Mind, Body, Spirit workbook. But I always write a book not so much to say, this is my information. It's more about remember, remember, remember what you already know. And that's how I felt on the South Downs of Britain when I was reading this book and saying, I remember, yes, this is true, this is true. There's something in this that I already know. And over the years, the chakras have been my way of entering into the spiritual journey, the spiritual destiny of people I've come into contact with, whether through doing a soul reading with them or in a workshop, and I recognize that in my years, because I am an intuitive, I see people through their chakras. So that if I do a soul reading with you, I'll often draw a little stick figure, maybe not a stick figure, a little head, body, legs. That's about as far as I got to when I was doing my, my artistic endeavors. But I was always able to look at people's chakras and to sense how they were doing in their life, what was going on in their life. And even today, I will promise you that if I meet you in the street, I do not read your chakras. But if someone asks me to help them, it is through their chakras that I will explore their journey, their, sh their challenges, their gifts. And it is the chakras that I believe have, are like windows into your journey, into your soul. And so I want to describe how I see them, and I hope that will help you, and maybe for you to go deeper into 
an understanding of how something like a chakra, which is an energy center, I'm going to talk more about that, can help you know yourself more deeply. And hopefully, if you are a practitioner, help you to understand your clients more deeply as well. And I've come to see that many people nowadays say, if I say to them, do you know what a chakra is? They go, yes, I know the chakras. I don't, may not know them well, but I know where they are. And I'm really admirable of people like Caroline Mace and others who have brought this knowledge to the fore. Uh, if you do yoga, you've probably read about or being involved with the chakras from that place also. But I, I want to say that sometimes when I'm talking to people, they say, oh, I know the chakras, but it's on such a superficial level. They've never understood the depth of what they really are about. And I want you to have a personal relationship with the chakras so you can say, wow, this is my journey. Uh, you could almost say that every day I look at them and say, how are you doing today? And do our chakras change? Yes, they do change, but they will change on different levels and it is not uncommon for certain chakras to have problems, not just maybe in your own life, but across the world. For instance, the throat chakra, I find 75% of people have issues at that throat chakra. And maybe before I go any further, it's not about having perfect chakras, please. It's not about, oh, I've got them all perfect, I am aligned. Your chakras are constantly changing because they are the interface between your outer world and your inner world. So you want them to change. You want them to find a balance so you can live within this world. And it's never the same exactly one day to the next. So let me come way back and say, what is a chakra? The word chakra is a Sanskrit word for meaning a wheel. But it's not just a wheel, it's like a Catherine wheel, if you, if you know those from fireworks. It's a spinning wheel. And there's always those who will say each chakra needs to spin in one direction. If it's healthy, it will spin in one direction, not the other direction. And again, I want you to understand nothing is so simple. So please do not let anybody tell you it's got to be a certain way, because I'm going to take you deeper. Because not only do I see a chakra as a wheel, I see it as a flower. A flower with many petals, but also with many layers to that flower, a bit like a rose. And so in the center of that chakra is what I see is your soul, your soul's pulse, the, the seed of your being, uh, your divine spark or your divine seed would be a better word. And that every part, every level, layer, of your rose is influenced by that central seed, that central spark, that, that pulse that says, this is who I am. And each layer is essential. Without that, this cannot express itself. So we have different layers to our chakras, just as we have different layers to our spiritual life or our soul's life. And some of those are made up of what we call our personality. Some of them are made up of, as I say, maybe what you call your spiritual self. But I, I don't like all these definitions. I want to just help you to understand everything you are is spiritual. There's not, this is my spiritual self, this is my personal self. No, they're all spiritual. They're all inspired. They're all inspired by spirit, by your soul. Some of them may be more of a higher, different frequency. Again, i sorry, I use the word higher, a different frequency than the others. But they are all who you are. And each of the levels of your flower, of your chakra, expresses different aspects of that particular chakra. Now, what are those different layers? Those different layers are what we call subtle bodies, energy bodies. And many a time we don't include our physical body as being an energetic body. We say, well, there's our physical body and then there are the subtle bodies, which is true. But just remind yourself that your physical body is also an energy body. It truly is made up of subatomic particles that are spinning, moving. Everything is energy. Your physical body is an energetic body. Your physical body has within it these chakras. So the chakras are found at different locations within your physical body. 
and your purpose or your desire is to what we could, what people often describe as opening your chakra so it can reveal the center of your flower the soul so that that particular chakra it your desire is that it opens itself fully so that not only is the soul revealed coming through that chakra, but all the other layers are also revealed. So what are those different layers? We often call them the etheric body, which is that um, energy body, a magnetic, electromagnetic energy body, very uh, sensitive to a very close to our physical body that almost, you could say, holds our physical body in place. My description would be if you turn a light on outside and then you let the moths gather around that light, you will eventually say there is no light, there is just a ball of moth. But when you switch the light off, the moths disperse and you see there was a light or something holding those moths together. That is how I see the etheric body's relationship to the physical body. It is the energy, the light, the electromagnetic energy that holds your body in place. When you die, it is the turning off of that light or that dispersion of that light that causes the physical body to no longer be able to survive and it so-called dies. So the etheric body is very important and I like to see that as the outside of your rose. So when your chakra is very closed, it is the etheric body that is surrounding it. And it's a bit like if I said it's raining outside, you then go and put a, a cover on yourself, a coat on. The etheric body is like that coat that covers you, but it doesn't protect you. It's not like, oh, I mustn't let myself be seen. It's something you take off again. And I want to make sure that I come back to that and say, you don't naturally just open and shut your chakras. This process of opening your chakra is a part of your evolution. It's part of your soul's growth. It comes through the development of your being, through the wisdom of your experiences. It's how well you know yourself, it's that chakra will open. Not by saying, today it's open, tomorrow it's closed. <laughs> so when we talk about closing a chakra, maybe I'll mention that now, it's literally you're just putting that coat on uh, against the rain. But it doesn't really do much more than that. It is, yes, I'm covering it so that I don't get wet, but I'm not making it open and close uh, like a flower that would go from a, a fully closed bud to a fully bloomed uh, presence. So, etheric body, inside that is the astral body, which is our emotional or our psychic body. Inside that is our mental body, which is where our beliefs live, our thinking. And inside that is our soul body, which you said, well, hang on a minute, you said that's right in the center. Well, I'm going to say that soul body is the first influence we have from our soul, from our unique divine self. Because then we have a spirit body and a universal body and probably another five bodies after that, names of which I don't want to get into. But what I'm saying is, as we become more aware of the emotions of each chakra, as we become more aware of the beliefs around each chakra, we are opening ourselves up to what is the soul's energy each chakra? What is the connection to spirit, which means how does my soul interrelate to all spirits? And then how does my soul relate to what we call universal energy? Uh, and really, we then say, well, that comes from the Big Bang. Well, it really doesn't. It's who are we beyond the far part of me that's asking the question? So I'm trying not to get too lost in this, but I'm saying just recognize these first levels to start with. The etheric, which is just this electromagnetic field. The astral or the psy um, psychic level, which is very important to our emotions. And then to the mental body and then to the soul body. Now, now you'll say, well, how many bodies are there? You may or may not know about a time called the Harmonic Convergence. This was on around the 20, 21st of August in 1987. On that time, the Hopi Indians suggested 
that 144,000 light beings were waking him up on that day. And many people I heard walked around and said, does that mean I'm one of these 144,000 light beings? No, because it wasn't about individuals. And if you need to ask that question, you're probably not one of the 144,000. Sorry, that's me being a little sarcastic. It wasn't about individuals. It was about light bodies. And so what we saw was on the harmonic convergence, we opened up to being 12 different light bodies. So our subtle body, our first subtle body was uh, etheric. And we have, um, we have 11 subtle bodies and one physical body. As I said, that is also a subtle body in itself. Then we also opened up at that same time to having 12 chakras open. And before you say, well, tell me the other chakras. I know seven, but I don't know more. I'm going to say that I know two more, but I'm not going to mention the last three. Now, any of you who have studied chakras will go on to tell me, oh, but we have one here, the ultra major. We have one here, the thymic gland. We have one here. We have one here. And I'm going to say this is absolutely true. We have chakras in our hands. But I do not believe that the extra three chakras that I'm not going to be talking about today are within our physical body. That's just my belief system. And truly, we have enough to deal with when we're just talking about the seven and then the nine chakras within our physical body, within or around our physical body. Just coming back to my maths here, 12 by 12 equals 144. What happened on the harmonic convergence is our chakras no longer just had seven levels, seven chakras. They now have 12 energies and there are 12 chakras, 144. That's what happened at the harmonic convergence. We opened up to who we truly are in our wholeness. Now, some of you know about dimensions. Maybe you're interested in different dimensions. And people often talk about third dimension, which is le length, breadth, and depth. This is what we call our reality, living in a world of three dimensions. What is the fourth dimension? Fourth dimension is our sleep state, where we can move around. Time doesn't matter so much. So you might know about that, but in your dreams, you can jump time and you can jump space. That's the fourth dimension. And then often people have mentioned, ah, oh, we're moving into the fifth dimension. Well, yes, we are the fifth dimension, but the fifth dimension is beliefs and thinking. So it's outside time and space, but it also has a placement. It almost defines us. Our beliefs nowadays, our level of information that is available to us defines us. And so what would be the sixth dimension? The sixth dimension is connecting to our soul. So it's the beginning of our soul connection. And you might have seen the six pointed star where we see, uh, we often describe as masculine and feminine coming together, through two triangles coming together. We move through the seventh dimension, the eighth dimension where you see heaven and earth. Are you moving with me here? So the, the subtle bodies, the 12 subtle bodies, actually are the same as the 12 dimensions. And scientists are talking about the 10th dimension. They have had access to that. But I'm talking almost the same language to say we as yet have not reached the, our understanding of what it is to be in the 11th and 12th dimension. And I'm, there may be more dimensions than that. Don't get me, don't uh, get me started. <laughs> okay, are you still with me? I just wanted you to not be limited. I hope that's how you're feeling, excited rather than limited. But let's just go back. Please just come back. We have within our body, seven outside our body, two more chakras. And I want to talk about these chakras and then... I want to talk about the myths that I sometimes see talked about around the chakras. And these are just my understandings, having worked with them for so long, that I, I want to break open the, um, some of the maybe more linear myths that are being perpetrated. For instance, many a time I hear people say, oh, the lower chakras are not important because I only live in my upper chakras. Again, does that sound linear to you? So it's almost saying lower is better, higher is better than lower. And 
but we're not linear, we're spirals. Every society, every indigenous society works on a spiraling event. Circles and then spirals. So imagine that the beginning of your spiral is your heart chakra. So your heart chakra, you can feel it, you can feel your chakras. Even if you just run your hand up and down over your chest, you can feel a warmth or a magnetic pull or even sometimes a cold, but a change. So just running your hand up and down your chakra, probably about that distance away, um, three or four inches if you're still working in inches, I think it's 10 to 12 centimeters, but I'm, I'm quite close to my body and I can feel the warmth of my heart chakra. That's my heart chakra. It's right in here. So my heart chakra is the center of my spiral. The heart chakra to me is where the pulse of your soul lives. It's just boom, boom, boom. <laughs> it's just saying is, this is what is my driving force. And that when I tap into my heart chakra, I'm tapping into my soul's intention. And what do we call that? We call it intuition. We call it heart speak. So when I'm listening to my heart, speaking from my heart, I'm speaking from my soul. So I'm like, ah, yes, this is my truth. So the more that we can come back to our heart, lean back into the heart, please, not forward, but back, and just to be able to say, ah, this is what my soul wishes for me. Breathe into that. There's a knowingness. That's the energy of the heart chakra, knowing. Not knowing here, knowing here. You can just feel it, I hope, as I'm talking to you. And I'm working with the heart chakra and I do my little figure and, and look at the heart chakra. It's very rare that the heart chakra is out of balance. When I work with people and we look at the heart chakra, maybe using applied kinesiology or just reading energy, the heart is okay. When it becomes out of balance is because its compatriot, as we spiral out, is the solar plexus. So now what am I talking about? What I see is the chakras are paired in most cases. There are masculine chakras and feminine has nothing to do with whether you're a man or a woman. It's again the duality coming together in the six-pointed star. So when we find that balance between our masculine and feminine, we come into balance with ourselves, into the magic of who we are. So the heart chakra is feminine. The masculine chakra is the solar plexus, just beneath your rib cage, just over your stomach. The solar plexus is a masculine chakra, so it's an electrical, it, it's outgoing. What does it do? It says, I am okay. It's about our confidence, our, our self-confidence, our self-ego. Um, and I'm, I was not wanting to use that word ego too strongly. It is where we feel good about ourselves, our personality. Carolyn Mays calls it our personal power. And it's really important to have a healthy ego, a healthy sense of personal power, a sense of, yay, look at me. <laughs> because only then will you go into your heart chakra. And Caroline used to say how hard it was for us to go from our solar plexus into our heart. Because our solar plexus is about me, my self-confidence. As we pass through the vesica pisces, it's in the diaphragm, we pass into the place of the heart which is interpersonal or transpersonal. See, our heart really isn't bothered about whether you like me or not, whether you agree with me or not. Um, it's just saying, I'm here. That's what we know about intuition. It's not emotional. Our solar plexus is. Our solar plexus is like a big satellite dish that says, please love me, approve of me. We'll do whatever you want, but don't, don't not love me. <laughs> And the solar plexus is the place of when people talk about gratitude and appreciation and selflessness and service, all wonderful qualities, but they're all solar plexus. They're all about my relationship with you and my sense of, oh, if I do this, then maybe I'm a better person. Maybe I'm being a little, um, a little mean, but I'm just saying is, when we have to be always grateful or appreciative or pass it on or 
be in service to others. It's all about us doing something for others in a desire to somehow feel better about ourselves. Oh, maybe you're saying, no, no, I do it all selflessly. So if you knew you were going to get nothing out of doing any of it, would you still do it? If you knew nobody knew what you were doing, would you still do the same things? Our heart says, our heart chakra says, doesn't bother me. I'm going to do this because this is my soul's journey. This is my, this brings a sense of knowingness and wholeness to myself. Our solar plexus is much more temperamental. It is scanning the room. I'm sure some of you recognize that in yourself. Scanning the room. Do you like me? Am I okay? Are you criticizing me? <laughs> and some of us we have larger solar plexus like plexi than others because we've been brought up to be selfless or think of others before we think of ourselves. And all of those things are good. But if there's an agenda, and we've talked about this before in other podcasts, then it isn't unconditional. The solar plexus is like, it's unconditional. I know you, I love you as you are, you love me as I am, it doesn't bother. So solar plexus is very important but the only way of enhancing that solar plexus is to celebrate ourselves. And I ask you to do that. You can never get enough celebration from someone else. You have to do it for yourself first. Okay, masculine, feminine. Next out, let's go again. Throat chakra, masculine. Sacral chakra, feminine. Please, please stop numbering the chakras. Can you understand that when you number them, you're back to a linear pathway? One, two, three, four. Why did we ever do that? There's no need to number them. You could call them the throat chakra, the sacral chakra. Sacral chakra is four fingers under your umbilical, your belly button. That's your sacral chakra. Again, you can run your hand over your throat chakra. You can feel the energy. You can run it over your sacral chakra. You can feel the energy. I will say as a woman, for my part, maybe just for me, this is where I put my fat over, is over my sacral chakra. Sometimes people put their fat over their solar plexus. We definitely know that people do this to protect their solar plexus, which is to cross their arms over their stomach. So feeling your own throat chakra, feeling your own sacral chakra. So let's move to the throat chakra. The throat chakra is about my will. It's, yes, people talk about it as the place of expression, but it's the place of expressing will. It's the place of whose will are you expressing? But it's also the place for me of transformation, of change. So are you following your will or are you following your soul's will, the greater will, my will versus thy will? Are you expressing something that just matters to you or are you expressing something that matters to your heart and to the destiny of your humanity? You see, when you speak from thy will, your expression, your words are not just about you. They're going to affect everybody. And then you have to make choices. Are the words I speak, are the thoughts I have actually enhancing humanity or what I hope to bring to the world? Or am I so cut off that I don't realize that I'm actually hurting other people? in a way that doesn't serve them or serve me. So the throat chakra is about using your words to bring about change, not only to your life, but to others. Using your expression, what is it you want to give birth to? What is it you want to put out into the world? What is your destiny? What are your gifts? And many, many times people hold on to their gifts, they hold on to their talents and make excuses or keep asking questions. Well, if I do this, what will be the outcome? Oh, well, can you make sure that it's all going to work out well if I do this? And the throat chakra says, just do it. Put it out there. So the bigger problems from the throat chakra are holding on, holding on to what you know, holding on to your gifts and talents, being stubborn. And all I can say is when you pass over, you're going to look back and go, why did I do that? Why didn't I put my ideas out there? You do not want to take your gifts and talents home with you again. Use them, express them, and know that in some ways nobody cares. 
What if it's not good enough? What if other people? Who cares? Just do it. <laughs> okay. The sacral chakra is the feminine. Now, this is a much deeper chakra. All the female chakras are much deeper. Sacral chakra is our relationship chakra. It is where we come together with others. It is not our sexual chakra. That, again, is one of those mythologies that I hear. It is not our sexual. Our sexual energies, ovaries, I should say, our sexual organs that we talk about in terms of our testes, our ovaries, actually develop embryologically down in the base chakra. And then they pass up into the place where they are. Or they, excuse me, they, let me change that. Beg your pardon. The sexual organs start their journey, excuse me, in the area of the sacral chakra and then pass down into the base chakra. The adrenal glands do the opposite. They come up from the base chakra and move into the sacral chakra. What I'm trying to say here, and I'm saying it in a rather cat candid way, is that relationship is not the same as sex. Sex is like wanting to take a cup of coffee. Now, you'll tell me it's more than that, but pure sex is an instinctual need when it's just about sex. That same instinctual need is driven by our adrenal glands. It's a quick fix. But when we move sex into, first of all, having a relationship, an intimate relationship with someone, that becomes a sacral chakra beauty. And then when we take it into our heart and we make love to someone, sex moves from relationship to an intimacy which is beyond the individual. So to call the sacral chakra the sex chakra is wrong. I love to call it the relationship chakra. Now for men and women, relationships are challenging and most of our deepest emotions are held or come from our relationships, whether it's with our parents, with our siblings, with partners, with friends. For a woman especially, those feelings that we have in relationships got, become settled into our sacral chakra, which is where a woman's womb is. And those things that we are ready to let go of, we let go of every month with our period, or if you're beyond your periods at the dark moon. Men also have a type of womb, it's called the prostate gland, but they do not have the means to release those emotions monthly so that they do rely on women to do that cleansing for them. Doesn't mean a man can't cleanse, but he has to be more uh, focused in cleansing his body, emptying what I would say is his prostate bowl of old emotions so he can cleanse himself. Women have always been the cleansers for men. But I just want to come back to saying the sacral chakra is where our deepest relationships are. And it is where we often become overwhelmed with feelings that have come from a relationship. So when we feel wounded in our relationships, we feel abused, we feel disrespected, we move our energy out of our sacral chakra up to our throat. And we then speak only from our throat because to go into those emotions is too painful. So I'm going to do another podcast about women when they need to be speaking now from their wombs and less from their throat. Because when it's a woman and a man just speaks from up here and they never ever go down into their womb, I know that woman or that man is holding on to deep emotions that are influencing their decision making, their expression of themselves. And it is so important for us to clean and clear and face our own wounds so we can become whole. Our sacral chakra carries both our joy of relationship and our woundedness, but we must not let the expression of who we are come from our wounds. We need to come from our desire to bring new change, not old pain. Next pairing is the crown chakra, our connection to spirit, and our base chakra, our connection to who we are in a sense of security. Here I am. It's our sense of the base. This is how I see myself. Crown chakra linked to spirit, linked to 
our, our spark of inspiration. Base chakra too should be linked to the earth, but it, we became disconnected. And I was listening to someone say, well, we are always going to be tribal people. And the answer is no, we're not. We're not meant to be tribal. What did they mean is that if I don't feel secure in who I am, I will join with other people and create a tribe or they, I will join a tribe to say, I now belong to this tribe. I belong to this culture. I belong to this civilization, whatever we want to call it. There's nothing wrong with belonging, but it's not my res, raison d'etre. I am, I am more than my tribes. I am more than my culture. I'm more than my, my, my color, my gender, my religion. And I worry when we are becoming so focused on what is your gender, what is your color. Well, these are not who you are. I don't mind if you want to get together with people who have similar ways as you, but it's not who you are. There's too much emphasis on this or that or this. If you like me, you're with me or you're against me. And it's come because the base chakra became so charged. Why did the base chakra become charged? Because we got cut off from the chakra under our feet, nine feet or three meters under our feet, which is the root chakra. It is the root chakra which is where we belong. It is the root chakra where the energy of what I call the dragon energy, which you've heard me speak about, where we connect to the grid of all existence, our knowingness of who we are. It is through that root chakra that we find our uniqueness. We go, aha, this is who I am. We root ourselves into that. And it was only because we got cut off from that energy, you've heard me talk about this before, that we then saw ourselves as only being able to know ourselves through a tribe, a culture, a civilization, a color, a gender, religion. I am more than that. And when you root yourself into that, and again, we've done some of this before, but I'm going to do more in another podcast, we start to say, I am this unique individual who appears in this way, but it's not defined in that way. And that begins to make us secure. And as the root chakra is the feminine, just to complete that, feminine, above our heads is called the star child or the stargate. And that is our masculine connection to all beings on other, in other worlds. It's where literally the interface happens between ourselves and our ET selves or our soul family, whatever you want to call them. And it is this ladder, Jacob's ladder, that was described between the crown chakra and the star child chakra. Now you might say, you missed one out, the third eye. Yes, the third eye is the marriage of the two, masculine and feminine coming together. This is the total balance. And when the third eye is in balance, we are fearless. Because fearlessness means I know who I am and I have no separation. If you see the word fear as meaning where am I separate from myself? And every time we hear fear being evoked by uh, maybe the media or people speaking to us, it says, wow, thank you. You're showing me a part of me that I have become separate from. When we allow ourselves to disappear into fear, we're losing ourselves. Love is the energy of connecting to ourselves. And sometimes we need to connect to the parts of us that we fear. So what are you running away from? Take ownership of it. And then the fear disperses. That's where the third guy comes into balance. So I know that I have spoken a lot and I know we have uh, not so much time left. But if you would like, I'd like to just show you how you can tap into your own chakras. If you have the time, please to make sure that you are doing this when you are at rest, you're not driving or doing anything else. Then the way to do this is to settle into each of your chakras in turn and to ask yourself, what animal do I see relating to each chakra? Now, I use the word animals because as you've heard me speak about, animals are the interface between the spirit and, and our humanness. Let the animal, it can be a creepy crawly, it can be a winged animal, it can be a fish, it can be a four-legged, two-legged. doesn't have to be a specific type. And what I'd say to you is don't get caught up in, oh, I like eagles or I like hawks. Let this animal be whatever it is that you want it to be. 
In other words, let the first thought be the right one. And then I'd ask you to ask yourself, what is the animal doing? Because that allows you to see with more depth, is this animal actually in balance? So if your animal is a horse, but the horse is tracked, maybe that isn't good for your animal. So what you'd want to say is, yes, I have a horse inside me, maybe in my throat chakra, but it's not going anywhere. So then you would ask yourself, what does that horse need? And then I'd ask you to ask yourself, how do you feel about being that animal? Does that animal feel happy or not? I'm using a, a metaphor such as happiness, but it does it feel as if this animal is doing what this animal should do. Um, if you've got a, an elephant, is it enjoying itself or is it limited? Is it, have you got a lion, is it roaring? And my final suggestion, and I'm not going to go through this meditation with you because it does take some time, but I would suggest you start at the root chakra and you ask yourself, you take your awareness there. So first of all, this is how I would start the meditation. Please quieten yourself. I would have a piece of paper and pencil or pen near you. And then I would say to you is take a few breaths, short breath in, long breath out. And do that a few times so you quieten your mind. Take your awareness down to your root chakra. And then imagine, ask yourself, what is the animal that relates to my root chakra? You ask that question, what is my animal doing? And you ask the question, how does my animal feel? And then when you have spent enough time there, you, make, you come out of the meditation very gently and make a note of your findings. Then you center yourself and move up through the other chakras. Base chakra, base of the spine, sacral chakra beneath the umbilicus, solar plexus, the area of the stomach, heart chakra between the breasts, Throat chakra at the throat, third eye, just above your other, between your other eyes, but above in your forehead, crown chakra above your head, and then up into the star chart. When you come out of the meditation, draw little pictures if you want. The key to this is ask yourself, did this animal feel appropriate to the chakra? Most importantly, if it was a masculine chakra you were looking at, was this a masculine animal, a masculine type animal? It doesn't have to be masculine in terms of a male, but was it, was it powerful and outgoing? Or was it a mouse? Did each chakra have the most appropriate? If not, you're gonna go back, speak to those different animals and say, what needs to happen to bring you back in harmony? Speak to the animals. And finally, Go back in and say, how do the two, the pairing, the throat chakra animal and the sacral chakra animal, how do they get on with each other? Do they like each other? Would they, of course, they might eat each other, but could they respect each other? They, could they find balance? And that's what I want you to do. And I would like you to make sure that you keep going back, maybe over the next few days, even few weeks. How are they all getting on? And I know you'll ask me, do they change? Yes, they do change. But sometimes if you find one particular chakra that uh, needs attention, you might have to be doing that for some months. I kept seeing a beaver at my throat chakra that was very, very busy. And I had to work with it for some months to quieten it down so it wasn't quite so busy. I hope I've given you enough ideas to look at the chakras. Of course, I recommend my own book, Frontiers of Health, where you can link the chakra to the personality, the illnesses, what the, each body needs, what each chakra needs, and how you can bring that spiritual energy out from each chakra. I hope you enjoyed this particular podcast.
I've enjoyed being there with you. And once again, listen to your heart. And until next time, many blessings. Thanks for listening to the Heart Speak Podcast with Dr. Christine Page. Remember to check out other episodes in the podcast archive section on www.christinepage.com. And do share with friends, family, and colleagues. Join us next time for another edition of Heart Speak.